We talked about Container Builder before, but we only really scratched the surface of what it can do. In this episode of the Cloud Rolling Update, it's time to play with multi-step builds in Container Builder. Special thanks again to Ahmed and Kelsey for teaching me about this. Make sure to check out their content linked in the description below. A single Docker file doesn't always get you what you need. And in fact, it's common to use multiple steps in a build pipeline to build, test, and deploy enterprise applications, which means a tool that can only build Docker images isn't that useful for creating real world applications. Luckily, Container Builder isn't just a Docker builder. By allowing you to run multiple build steps, each of which can run any Docker image as part of your build, well, it provides a simple and powerful way to customize build steps and build environments. You might be wondering, why is that useful? Well, it allows you to run unit tests with your build or reduce the size of your final image by rebaking your image onto a leaner, smaller base image that removes build artifacts, test tooling, and other crud. So to run this feature for yourself, here's what you need to know. You can customize build steps with a cloudbuild.yaml file. Each build step runs in a container. You can bring your own container images or use Google provided ones. Your repository is mounted at slash workspace and contents of slash workspace are preserved from one build step to another. And this is exactly like Jenkins build pipelines where you have artifacts that are stashed or unstashed from one step of the pipeline to the next. This means that if you distribute your apps as containers, well, you don't need to host a Jenkins instance or a third party CI service to build and push images. So to illustrate this better, let's use GCB to build, test, and package an example Go application. I want to remember that when I submit the build to GCB, my source code is pulled into a workspace directory. From there, GCB runs the commands that I specify over the contents of that workspace directory. It's also good to know that the Container Builder team publishes and maintains a set of Docker containers with common developer tools like Git, Docker, the G Cloud command line interface. So I can use any of these to run operations inside of my build. Now, using these tools, I'm going to define a cloudbuild.yaml file. This has a pipeline with a specific set of steps to run, just like in any build system. But instead of storing these images locally, we use the ones that are stored in the cloud. First, go install will produce a binary that I can use in my next step. Then we'll use the go docker container image again to test our code. Finally, we'll use a docker container to build an image. This assumes that there's a docker file in my workspace. If all of the above steps pass, then the final result of this will be GCB example image. When I submit the build, you can see all of these steps from the cloudbuild.yaml file running. So what's the point? Container Builder is not just for building Docker containers, but it's a composable ecosystem that allows you to use any build step. For more information about this, be sure to check out the links from Ahmed and Kelsey in the description below. And to learn about more advanced features of Google Container Builder, like using build triggers to automate creating containers, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm Carter Morgan, and I'm telling you to tune in next time to learn what's rolling out in the next Cloud Rolling Update. Thanks for watching. Check out previous episodes of Cloud Rolling Update and click here to watch Kelsey's next talk on Container Builder. See you next time.